Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining, and welcome back to another episode of Max on Color. And um, today, I'm just by myself, as you can see, uh, because Diego cannot make it today. But we wish him the best. He because he's on a project, and um, he'll join us in the next episode. And um, yeah, who's ready to talk about magic bullet looks today? Um, if but but before um, we we are going to talk about magic bullet looks, uh, that's the um, how do you call it? That's the content of today's um, episode. By the way, we're going to uh, check uh, magic bullet looks and see how you can use it in different workflow. Right? Sometimes um, you know you can use magic bullet looks in many host applications. That you already know that, right? Um, because it lives in so many host apps. But sometimes when you're using it in a nonlinear editor or in a compositing app and also in the grading app like Resolve, things sometimes can get a little bit messy and sometimes you need a little bit, you know, a change of mindset to be able to exploit the workflow. And we'll, we'll look into that today and we'll try um, trial and error. We'll try a lot of like different workflow that you can fit in into uh, Premiere Pro and also DaVinci Resolve. All right. And before we move on, let me share my screen. Because if you're here, you probably know that at Maxon, we have webinars from Monday until Friday. And um, speaking of webinars, next Monday, we will be joined by um, Jason here and Tony Barry, and we'll be talking about universe for editors in demystifying post productions. And um, so if you go to uh, maxon.net and um, slash events, you'll be able to see uh, the listed um, events that is hosted by that are hosted by a Maxon um, training team. And for example, if you open the first week of um, the mystifying post productions, you'll see that Jason will uh, showcase how to use universe, some tips and tricks, and then also some uh, favorite tool from Jason, and he'll show it in uh, Premiere Pro. So that's the idea because Universe is a collection of a lot of uh, plugins, and you can use it either for editing, compositing, and a lot more stuff. There are transitions, there are generators, and there are some stylus effects. And sometimes things like that can also get overwhelming. And um, when things start to get overwhelmed, I think it's a good time for you to tune in to the Mystifying Post Productions for Universe, right? First week, we'll be talking about Premiere Pro. Second week, we'll be showing um, Avid Media Composer. And third week, we'll be DaVinci Resolve and we'll close it in the Final Cut Pro. Okay, um, that's the the mystifying post-productions. And um, next, like tomorrow, tomorrow, Hasi and Seth will be back uh, for another excellent um, episode. Uh, for VFX and Chill. Um, if you haven't uh, checked out their episode last week, um, I think it's really great. And I really urge you to um, uh, watch that. It's available in our YouTube training team um, channel. And speaking of YouTube uh, Maxon training team channel, this uh, recording, uh, this session is recorded. And it is also available in the YouTube uh, page, Maxon training team. And um, if you go to playlists, you can like see literally like every single webinars that we host in our channel. And if you go to each of this video available in this playlist, you'll see that there are really nice timestamps uh, ready for you. And um, so if you want to skip some content and you just want to go into like the interesting bit, you can do that. And um, you can thank Dr. Sassi for doing that, for providing this excellent timestamps. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. So before we start, um, like usual, you can get a free t-shirt if you haven't get one. So I posted a link in the in the comment. So if you follow that link, you will be uh, redirected into a super secret uh, shop uh, from Maxon. And you can uh, type in the code to enter the shop. Um, I think the code for today is still sculpting world, everything um, uppercase. So I'll just type in in the comment 
sculpting world and you can enter the shop and get one of this merchandise and those are free and you just need to pay for a shipping cost which is i don't know it depends on the country where you live right okay let me change this right today we are going to talk about magic bullet looks and like i already mentioned before if you've been using magic bullet looks um probably you know how to you, you already know like all the interface all the tools inside it and probably most probably the most common way to use magic bullet looks is that you use it shot by shot basis right so you have a shot and then after that you apply magic bullet looks and then you move to another shot you either copy it or save it as a presets and reuse it okay that's that's very common and that's not um, wrong at all uh, because you can use it like that and um, um, bef um, instead of me uh, just speaking like that and showing my uh, screen like uh, like what you see at the moment perhaps let me show you Premiere Pro and let's dive in into Magic Bullet Looks, right? Oh, by the way, Magic Bullet Looks is also available uh, inside Cinema 4D and Unreal Engine 5. So if you want to um, add some sparks into your 3D rendering, for example, you can do that. You can uh, launch Magic Bullet Looks inside Cinema 4D or Unreal Engine and then after that, um, create the looks that you are aiming for. And what's nice is that you can also work inside a color management framework using Magic Bullet Looks, right? So, for you, for you guys who haven't um, really know about Magic Bullet Looks, let me just give a, uh, um, a tour, an interface tour of Magic Bullet Looks, right? Um, to find Magic Bullet Looks inside Premiere Pro, you can go to Effects Panel, and if you type in bullet, you'll see like all the available um, tools in the magic bullet, uh, in the magic bullet suite. Um, how do you call it? Magic bullet suite. That's, that's the word that I'm looking for, right? Um, so if you're typing in bullet, every single tools will be shown in that uh, effects panel. So in this case, I will just use Magic Bullet Looks, and this is mo probably the most common um, way, like how you can use Magic Bullet Looks inside your NLE, right? And here I'm in Premiere Pro, I'm in Editing Layout, I just add Lumetri Scopes to preview my image. And if you don't know how to um, launch Lumetri Scope in um, Editing Layout, you can just simply go to Windows and type uh, and just um, check Lumetri Scopes. And you'll have like Lumetri scopes where you can like, and you can fit like in any uh, area of your working space. So here, I will just drag Magic Bullet Looks and put it into my clips, right? So um, let us get familiar with the interface, right? As soon as I hit Edit Looks, and if you give me a moment you'll be redirected into a separate windows and this separate windows is a you know magic bullet looks and it's totally a different environment than uh, premiere pro before before it's a it's a designer environment so you can design your look and you can play around with all the tools available um right in the middle of your screen you have the viewer where you can view your image and at the bottom of the screen there is a tool chain and we'll talk about the tool chain later on but what i want to show you here and in every corner of magic bullet looks there are drawers right so in total there are four different drawers uh there's looks that say that contains um, the presets of magic bullet looks and then if you hover over it or if you click it you'll you'll pin it Okay, if you hover over it, you're just like opening it. And as soon as you move your cursor away, it close. And you can also just click it to, to pin it. That's what I mean. And what's nice is that if you click L in your keyboard, it also pin the drawer open. And um, the next drawer is scopes. So who's familiar with scopes? 
Anybody? I think we talk about scopes a lot in this channel. So um, scope is, is, is a tool that guides you, that, uh, that uh, gives you a reading of your image in a, in a two-dimensional um, fashions, right? So you can see in the RGB parade, uh, you can see that the red channel is a little bit up compared to the green and blue channel. So there are five different scopes, um, RGB parade, hue saturations, which is more like the uh, vector scope. And what's nice is that uh, this scope, you can like uh, drag and drop, uh, you can drag the, the, the bar and it will resize accordingly. And then you have the memory colors and hue and lightness and slice graph, right? So slice graph, probably it's a little bit more um, unique. I think if you're familiar with waveform, uh, slice graph is a wave, uh, is a waveform with a with a special tools. That is this uh, triangle here. It's very teeny tiny triangle on the. Let me let me um, zoom in. So uh, you, you can see that as soon as you select slice graph, it uh, it gives you like this uh, tiny uh, golden arrow on the top right hand side of your viewer. And the idea of this um, golden triangle here is that it's drawing a virtual line in your um, image, a uh, horizontal line, horizontal virtual line, and it gives the reading in the slice graph. So you can see that here we have, uh, the red channel is stronger than the green and the blue channel. And as we go to the burger area, you can really see that the burger is like somewhere in the middle over there. I mean, it's this virtual line that goes through the screen, right? And that's the scope. And you can also reorder your scope. For example, if you want to see memory color um, a lot, you can like drag it on top. And for me, my favorites, I normally just leave my RGB parade and my vector scope open. Right, that's the second drawer. The third drawer is the tools drawer, right? You can also press T for tools. And there are four different categories in the tools. The first one is the selective tools. So um, to understand the selective tools, it's like um, you can understand it as a, as a set extension of your um, project, right? So in the set, you can normally block some area, you can um, create a negative fill, you can add the exposure, you can put a gradient uh, filter, and that's that's how you do it. Um, that that Those are the tools that are available in the selective uh, categories. So you can tackle uh, exposure, contrast, and then you can do like gradient and then create a fill light or, or spot fill light so it's like a fill light but only in a certain spot okay and the next one are the camera tools so in order to understand the camera tools you can imagine the camera tools as the tools that you normally do with your camera either like putting in um, filters in front of your lens or playing around with a shutter speed to create like a creative uh, how do you call it, looks with your photography. So um, there are several tools. The new one is optical diffusions, which is we'll showcase that later on. And um, optical diffusions, um, so it's like a diffusion filters that you can put on top of your camera. And there's also shutter streak. So if I drag and drop shutter streak, you can really see that it creates like this very um, soft look. And also it creates some streak like like this horizontal streak not horizontal vertical streak that goes um all the way on your image right so um that's the camera tools um the next one are the color correction tools the color correction tools are the tools that you need your computer for uh, that you need your computer um in order to be able to use it like the three color wheels, lift gamma gain, shadow, midtone highlights, and then also the hue saturations, or if you want to use LUT, or if you want to uh, qualify certain hues and then change it or do anything with it. Those are the tools that lives inside the color corrections category. 
right? So you can also find tools, uh, standalone tools inside Magic Bullet Looks, inside the Mag uh, inside. Um, I mean, sorry. Let me repeat. You can also find the standalone um, Magic Bullet Suite tools like Colorista, Mojo, inside Magic Bullet Looks, right? So you can use it in Magic Bullet Looks. And last but not least are the tools in the film emulations category. For example, uh, we have like the film negative and film print. You know that as a standalone, uh, Magic Bullet film is also available in, in um, as a standalone versions. But the thing is like if you're using um, um, film as a standalone tools, you cannot separate the, the, the negative film emulations and then the, the print film emulations. So for example, if I want to apply negative film negative and then film print but in the middle I want to do like a two strip process like that you cannot do it in the um, in the how do you call it in the standalone versions so you can only do that in in the magic bullet suite version so that also inspires some workflow that will look uh, later on inside resolve right um, let's just drag and dra drag it out so to cancel that and those are the tools and um, the other drawer that I haven't shown you is that whenever you open a tools here you can see the control drawer so press C to close it and press C to open it again and as soon as you select any tool the controls will be visible inside the drawer okay right um, I want to like draw your attention into the tool chain and the tool chain is like the the, the three boxes here um, if you select either input or output it will open a color management tools right and there are two different flavors of color management um, the first one is the original 1d color handling uh, tools um, what it does is um, it is applying uh, 1D tone curve transformations into your working space and out into your um, display space, so to say. The thing with 1D is that it is great if you're working in compositing, if you just want to change the tone curve and then you don't want to mess around with the gamut, you can just use 1, 1D color handling. Um, that means that you're just changing the tone curve of your image but the gamut remains in the camera original gamut uh, by using 1d color handling you will need um, a gamut mapping on top of that if you want to view your image correctly right but in this case that's not going to be the case because this is a srgb image and the second flavor of our color management is the Open Color IO Aces, right? So, um, what's nice with Aces is that um, it really shines when you have like um, a lot of um, clip or a lot of footage coming from different um, sources. For example, if you have a 3D renders and then you want to mix that in the timeline with a Ari Log C camera or or a drone footage or anything, what uh, what Aces is actually doing, if you're working on Aces, means that you are stripping all those different color science of those uh, source media, and then you put it in the, you're putting all those same, uh, those different media in the unified working color space. And then from that unified working color space, you can target different display um, that you want to uh, target. So for example, if you want to target a, a computer monitor, you can select in NAS RGB or Rec 709 for TV or P3 for um, any like a high-end screen like a MacBook Pro or any Apple devices, right? So um, another benefit of using ACES is that um, it is it is like it is it has like a very wide dynamic range of working space so anything that you do inside that uh, space, sometimes it generates like a more photographical result. So just to prove a point, for example, if we switch um, our color management 
into just a normal 1D color handling. And here, if I do an exposure change, it means like I'm not going into like this uh, huge uh, wide dynamic range um, color space, ACES AP1. And I, I'm just staying in sRGB. And if I'm doing like minus one exposure, my image looks like that, okay? So if we want to, we can capture that image. So it will be shown in the reference image, reference library. And then later on, we can try to compare them. Now, let's change the color management back into ACES. And here, I will just tag it that it is a sRGB image or Rec. 7 in, Rec. 709. Rec. 709 um, color space using, I mean, sRGB color space is using uh, like exactly the same primary as the Rec. 709. So in this case, we can just stay in the Rec. 709 for that case, or if you want to, if you want to, why not? Let's change it to sRGB and select the output, same as input and the preview in sRGB. So if I select the preview over here on top, it shouldn't do any difference, right? Um, because we are uh, coming from sRGB, working in sRGB and outputting our image back to sRGB. Um, so here, my one-stop exposure look like that so for example if we are going to compare our image look at that this is the exposure change done in sRGB and this is the exposure change one uh, minus one exposure done in ACES it's amazing right so yeah there you go another thing is that whenever we're working with the log clip for example um, one thing that we did a lot before grading is that you try to normalize your image first, right? And you can do that like by hands if you want to, but whenever you are using ACES, you just need to simply tag it, what type of clips you're working with. So for example, if we close this, I don't want to save it. For example, if we have a lock clip like this, and if I have Magic Bullet looks applied onto this clip. And let's launch Magic Bullet looks. And in this case, I'll change it into ACES. And for example here, this is a clip that coming from Ari camera. So I'll just like browse the options here. I'll choose Ari with the exposure index of 800. And I'll choose my output display space. And I want to preview it in Rec. 709, right? So just by doing that, my image looks like normalized already. So now I can just focus on the fun stuff that is sweetening those images, just create a look on top of it, right? So that's the, the transformations done by the, the, the color science inside ACES. So you don't have to push it manually, okay? And now this is like the, the very common method if you want to create um, looks inside um, ACES, uh, inside um, your nonlinear editor, right? You go from one clip to the other, and then after that you apply magic bullet looks, transform it to Rec. 709, and then after that creating your look. And then you kind of like repeat it again from one clip to the other clip, and the next clip. You can save your look as a preset, but you can also copy and paste uh, the same magic bullet looks into another clip, right? That's okay if you have like a very short timeline if you have like a less than 10 clips or even like 15 clips I think you can do that But just imagine if you have a long form and you have hundreds or thousands of clips. Do you want to work like that? No, right? <laughs> uh, there are probably a better way to do that. Okay um, But for now on let's just create our first look together with magic bullet looks. And then after that, we'll try to fit in magic bullet looks in different workflow. So for the first one at the moment, what we're doing here, we'll just create look inside the, the clip level, okay? So um, this is a clip coming from Ari Amira. So it was shot in Ari Log C. Now that I already have my image uh, normalized, I can try to create the looks. 
So for example, I'm a big fan of like a film. So for example, if I want to emulate the process of a digital footage scanned in um, transferred into film negative and then after that uh, scanned and then transferred into film positive or film print, we can do that with the tools inside Magic Bullet Looks. So if we want to mimic that process, perhaps the best thing to do that first is just by applying the film negative first. And in this case, uh, please let me know in the chat if um, all the interface is too small because I'm using a 4K screen here. Um, so I can just like keep zooming in and zooming out for you guys, or I can change my resolutions if you wish to. Let me know in the chat, okay? So um, here by default, I have like a 22 different film scan that I can select right and by the way this is our, this this actually uh, based on the real uh, film scan and um, you can choose like whatever you like here I mean emulating like the correct look of a film not the correct the exact look of a film like one-to-one -one, is a very hard process it's a uh, you know you, you really need to pay attention to a lot of things how those film was shot which light was used and then how those film are scanned and which scanner is used and so on and so forth all the lab process um, the idea of magic bullet film is that it gives you the the color density and then the contrast um, response of a film so that it looks it's it's a it's like a you know it's it's not promising you to giving to give you like a one-to-one -one reproductions but still it gives you the look and feel of a uh, film stocks right so in this case let's choose the kodak 5229 vision 2 500t i like that a lot let me just get out from my zooming there okay and here i have an options to introduce grain early on but i don't want that let's just like slide the grain all the way to zero and then after that i can play around with the contrast i don't want to put a lot of contrast in my film negative probably i'll reduce it or like minus 30 and what do you think i think i like it except that the saturations is a little bit much so perhaps reduce it to 60 or maybe around 80% and or even 90% but I will reduce my strength to around just 50 or even 60% right that's my film negative right so it is as if we are transferring our digital footage into a film negative in this case a virtual film negative and I can try to emulate the process of transferring those film negative into a film print. That is simply by, ju just by using a film print um, tools inside the film uh, categories, okay? And at first, I see that there's a huge amount of contrast here. Perhaps I can tackle it down, split it halfway, like uh, minus 50%, I think that's okay and reduce the grain and if I want to I can also reduce the strength maybe around 80% and by by doing that uh, you can really see that this is before and this is after so we're heading somewhere already right and I can also tweak my color temperature if I want to maybe make it a little bit warmer just a tad bit warmer and just slightly more magenta something like that and um, I can further finalize my look like uh, play around with my look by messing around with the black level of my image in this case you can see in the scopes it's a little bit lifted so I can just target that black level and bring it down by using the four-way colors 
Um, the difference between four-way colors and color and in and colorista is that in four-way colors you can target like the the area that you are targeting. Okay, so for example, if I just want to ta target the the black level of my image, I can just like drop this and then I can reduce the range, right? So I just want to have like a very narrow range of that shadow area. And in this case, I'll just bring it down like that, but not crushing it too much. So here's before and after. Maybe widen it a little bit. And before, after. It's subtle, okay? So um, what I can do also is that I can try to emulate the look of a diffusion filter screw in in front of your lens, right? Um, here inside Magic Bullet Looks, there is this tool called Optical Diffusions. And I can use my optical diffusions right before my film negative. So it's like right in, in front of the film negative as if my footage was shot with a diffusion filter. And if we, sh uh, if we select the diffus optical diffusion uh, tools, you can see that there are uh, control for the density, for the size, and for the fall off, and so on. And you can even preview highlights if you want to um, r limit your effects only in the highlights. So once you check the highlights, preview highlights, and you can drag the highlights only uh, controls, you can really see that which area got um, targeted, right? So in this case, I can limit it like that or I can reset it. And the easier way to start with optical diffusions is that simply by using all those presets. And these presets are made in collaborations with Dr. Sassi as well. And that's really nice. I think Stu and Dr. Sassi work together on, on these presets to create like a very good looking matching presets to your favorite um, diffusions uh, filters available in the market. So if you want to see what are those um, available options in the diffusion, diffusion um, presets, let me zoom in. You can see that there are some ProMist filter available and you, you have like Schneider uh, filter as well. But my favorite is the Glimmer Glass. So I'll just use Glimmer Glass. And, and here is before and that is after. And you can really see the effects on the clip before, after, right? And if I want to, I can just limit the highlights uh, limited only on the highlights area of the image. So let me reset my zoom and let's preview it. And I want to just limit it on the brighter area of the image, perhaps something like that. So very subtle. And I think I like this already. Okay. So since we are working shot per shot basis, in shot per shot basis. N normally, I want to balance my, my clip inside Magic Bullet Looks as well, right? So for example, if I want to play around with the color balance in the clip, I can use Colorista before my looks. And then after that, I can try to perhaps warm warming up the highlights a little bit by reducing the, bl uh, reducing the blue. And if you reduce the blue, the effects is that you will introduce yellow on the highlights, right? On that certain area. So it's like the complementary color. Blue goes all the way to yellow, okay? And in the shadow, perhaps I want to introduce a tinge of red just slightly. And um, I think that's it. So this is before and that's after. I quite like it, okay? And you can save all of this as a presets. And if you want to do that, uh, there is like this button over here. Um, and you can click that and it will open a w uh, another window called safe look window. And then you can name it. And you can select the folder that you want to uh, use. 
In this case, I can use my custom folder or the one that I just created today and I can save it. All right. And as soon as I confirm it, so this is before and that is after. Okay. So when you're working shot by shot basis, then you can go to the next shot. You can apply magic bullet looks. And then after that, hit edit looks, launch it and apply those presets. Or you can simply just click copy here and then paste it. Right. And if you want to match those shot, like there is like this um, control in, in Premiere, it's called the comparison view. Okay. And you can kind of park it there. And I think I got a pretty nice match already. Okay. You can really see that my highlights is kind of like, okay ish. I can go back into magic bullet looks and refine my look inside magic bullet looks, but then I don't have my comparison view anymore. Okay. That's already one disadvantage working shot by shot basis. And then after that, just imagine if you have, I mean, if you have like 10 clips like this, that's totally fine. But then if you have like hundreds of clips, just imagine the amount of like the instance you, that you're putting into the, uh, each clip. And at some point it will get heavy, right? And you don't want that. There's a better way to use magic bullet looks in, in an NLE like Premiere Pro, for example. That is by using the help of adjustment layer. So for example, here, if I delete magic bullet looks, I can create an adjustment layer. I already create that by the way. And I can just like apply it to every thing. And I can start using magic bullet looks in this adjustment layer. So hit edit looks. And now let's change our color management into ACES. And this is a clip coming from Ari Amira, shot in Ari Lock C. And I want to target Rec 709, preview it in Rec 709. And that's it. And since we already saved that, uh, saved our looks as a preset, we can go to the presets in looks, select the folder that you uh, uh, use, and we can select the look that we created together today. And by simply confirming it, you'll see that it is applied on all different clip, right? But bear in mind, we have grading, like we have like um, balancing happening under our look. We don't want that. I don't want to do that because it depends on the clips. Sometimes it can mess around um, with a, with, with, the, with the different clips. So for example, I will just drag and drop my, my um, highlight corrections in this clip because that, that's not going to be the same case with the different clips. I want to do that in the clip level. So after drag and dropping Colorista out from the uh, tool chain, I can confirm my look. And then now I can go into the clip level and then just simply use Colorista in the clip level. The only downside doing this way is that Colorista will work inside the, the, the camera source color space. In this case, it will work in Ari Log C because we're not using ACES inside um, Colorista. So I'll just ch uh, change the control response to log and I will perform exactly the same uh, adjustment like before. Reduce the blue in the highlight it will give you a little bit of yellow and then add a little bit of red in the shadow. Just like that. Just like that. And if I want to, I can co uh, copy this instance of Colorista and go to the next clip and copy that. So if we compare it, you can really see that we have the same adjustment, except that we, br uh, we detach the, um, the balancing, not we detach it and we're not doing it in our looks because our looks will serve 
all the clips in the timeline, but then we are grading under it, balancing under it, okay? So we can do that and in the, in the clip, like in the different clip, like uh, the indoor one, like this, we can also adjust the balance with Colorista. So in this case, it's a little bit too warm. Maybe I should just reduce a little bit red from the highlight, increase some blue in the highlight, and reduce a little bit of red in the shadow, just like that. And this is before, and that is after. And since we have like two scenes indoor, two indoor scenes, I can just copy this and apply it. Okay, and you can still further tweak the details um, inside Colorista. So if you want to know more about Colorista, I think last six weeks, uh, we did like a complete breakdown of Colorista, which tool, uh, what slider in Colorista does what. So if you're interested on that, you can go to Maxon Training Team Color, uh, Maxon Training Team um, YouTube channel and go to the, I think it's February the 2nd episode of Maxon Color, where we talk just about Colorista, about every single tools inside Colorista. So we can do that. Now, the problem here in this method is that we have uh, like different clips here, okay? This doesn't look good. That's because these two clips are not coming from Ari Alexa. Look at that, it's like breaking up everywhere. And these are, these two clips are the, how do you call it, the Rec. 709 images, the sRGB images, right? Um, one nice thing is that um, you can just trim your adjustment layer and you can just like like shorten, shorten it like that. But if you have like scattered clips in your timeline, you can do this. Like for example, if, we, if I want to include this clip and that one and that one, you can select that or this, sorry. Uh, by, by pressing shift and click. So shift and click and then click each of this clip and then just drag it up, release it, and you can drag it back down and you'll see that it's trimming all those um, adjustment layer. So in this case, we can create a new adjustment layer for this two different clips or three different clips. But in this case, we don't want to do that uh, with this one because that's just an example, right? So. So in this case, we can exactly use the same method like before by using another adjustment layer, uh, put, put uh, magic bullet looks in it. And um, Eduardo is asking in the chat, what is the passcode to continue? Do you mean the passcode for um, T-shirt? Um, the passcode for T-shirt today is sculpting worlds like let me bring that nice background over there so you can see that the the password for today is sculpting worlds to enter the uh, the shop okay so let me hide the password again okay right so that is one way uh, to work with looks inside uh, Premiere Pro um, do you have any um, uh, workflow using Magic Bullet Looks inside Premiere Pro or any other NLE? Um, if you have, please let me know. Um, you can reach out to me at maxoncolor at maxon.net. It's always nice to talk about uh, color grading because it's one of it's my huge passions to do that. I mean, yeah, reach me out. To let me know how do you color grade your um, uh, project inside Premiere Pro with Magic Bullet Looks. That would be interesting for me to. Uh, know as well. Okay, now let's move into um, Resolve. So we kind of already done with this and let's just close this. Yeah, I want to save it. Why not? Okay, do you guys see my Resolve? Right, I think so. Now, um, in Resolve, I have like exactly the same timeline as before. And um, since Resolve has like many different page pages here, we have like cut page, 
edit page, fusions and color. Um, I would like to um, inform you that Magic Bullet Looks is available in the cut page, edit page, fusion page, and then also the color page. So there are plenty of like a possibility if you are working with um, Resolve, for example. You can use your the same method like um, in Premiere Pro like before you can create adjustment layer and do um, exactly the same approach but if you want to to unlock the true potentials go to the color page and use it there right but for example if you're on the on the go uh, for example if you're working on iPad with a speed editor and you just want to create a, a just a fast overall looks for your project you can do that in the cut page, you can go to the effects and type in looks, and you'll see that Magic Bullet, is, Magic Bullet Looks is available in the effects as well. You can just drag and drop it to your clip or use an adjustment layer if you want to. Same in the edit page. If you go to the effects and go to the open effects and type in looks, you'll see that Magic Bullet Looks is also available there, okay? And in Fusions, it's just the same. So for example, if you select the media in and then press shift space, you'll have like this interface, select tool interface. And here, if you tap in looks, it will add looks as a new node in your, um, how do you call it, in your node uh, tree, right? Let's delete that. Um, what I want to show you today is that how you can use magic bullet looks um, like in a more creative way so to say so you kind of like mimic the process pro the journey of lights from like a from like in the set the lights travels from the light source into the sensors and here you can like kind of mimic the 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 light travels from like the very beginning of the signal to the end of the output, right? Um, what's nice inside Resolve is that um, there's a capability, there's a, a uh, you can group your clips. That's what I want to say. You can simply group your clips. Before grouping your clips, you have like at the top of the, um, your note tree here, if I, how do you call it? If I zoom it in, Let's wait. You can see in, on top of your note tree, there are two different dots. The first dot is the time, uh, the clip, and then the second one is the timeline. It means that in the clip level, you're just working like in the clip level, like what we did before in Premiere Pro. So all your adjustment here will be just affecting that one particular clip. So for example here, if I'm, if I'm just adding like this red hue on my image, it will just affect this image. But if I'm moving to another image, it doesn't affect anything, right? Because it was done in the clip level. So if I move into timeline level, and here, if I do exactly the same adjustment, and if I go to next clip, you'll see that all my clips got affected. It's like similar to like applying the adjustment layer to all your clip and then just do your adjustment there, right? So let's reset this. Now let's group our clip. And by grouping your clips, you'll see that you will unlock two more um, categories in the node tree, in the node editor, I mean. So in this case, I want to, un uh, to uh, group my lock clip together, uh, select select all of them uh, just by like select one and then s uh, shift and click the very last clip. Right click, sorry, we are on the timeline. We need to go to the clip level and then right click and select add into a new group, right? So in this case, these are the lock clips and hit okay. And as soon as you hit okay, you'll see that right on top of that, right on top of your node uh, tree, node editor, you'll see you have four different dots there. So you still have the clip level and you still have the timeline level, but in between you have like the group pre-clip and group post-clip. So 
let me disable this again. So group post clip. Um, if we go to uh, group post clip, and if I select this one, and I do this adjustment, you'll see that all your clips in the same group will go, will be affected. Okay, but then this adjustment will be um, will be applied after all the adjustment that you do in your clips level. So for example here if I am reducing my red means that here I will have a I, I will have a green uh, hue on my image on all the clips uh, or sorry on 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 the on the clips on just just on this clip but then I apply the 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 red hue on 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 all the groups. So I think I made a little bit more complicated. So to explain that, what you what you um, to to make it easier to understand, um, I have like this red adjustment on all these clips in this group, right? But only on this on this clip, I introduce um, I reduce red, which is like introducing sign onto that, and and that counteracts the 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 adjustment. So only on this clip. I have like the normalized looking image because I counteract the this adjustment in the group post clip. But then all the other clips still got that, right? So the adjustment, this um, the adjustment done in the clip level will be applied first, and then after that, all the other adjustment in the group post clip level will be applied next. So let's reset this. And also let's reset that. And group pre-clip, it's like quite the opposite of the group post-clip. All the adjustment happens inside the group pre-clip. It's done, it's applied first before the, all the adjustment inside the clip level. Okay, with that in mind, I think we, all, we, we, we are now ready to, um, how do you call it, apply magic bullet looks in this case. So let me just quickly add this to um, clips in the in the in the new group um, add into a new groups and this are 709 clips okay now um, I want to work in a color manage framework and um, the way you can do that uh, you can go into a project management uh, project settings right um, here here is a interesting thing um, when you are working inside Premiere Pro you are transforming your clips into display color space with magic bullet looks. But then if you're working inside a color management framework inside Resolve, for example, Resolve is doing that. Resolve is the one who's doing the transformations from the camera space into working space. And then after that, from working space into the display space. So when you are using magic bullet looks inside Resolve, inside a color manage framework, like in ACES, um, in this case, magic bullet looks needs to speak, the, uh, it needs to act like a, like a middleman. So it needs to understand the language from camera space into working space. And then it also needs to understand the language from working space into uh, the output, the display space. So. Let's set um, ACES in our uh, project settings. So you can open the project settings by clicking like this teeny tiny icon, like gear icon at the top, at the um, bottom right. And you can go to the color management and on the color science, I can select ACESicity and use the newest versions uh, uh, in this case, it's 1.3. And on the input transform, I will select no input transform because we have like two, two different, um, how do you call it, type of images. We have like RE log C images and then the sRGB. So we can select no input transform here. Or if you want to, you can select the, you can tag it with the most uh, type of clip that you have in your timeline. In this case, I have a lot of RE log C clips. I can just select RE log C3 and the output i'll select rec 709 and i'll use 
color space aware grading tools and as I hit save you can see that all the clips look correct already now I'm ready to grade but then if I select my sRGB clips it's like okay everything is wrong there's two clips so like before that's neat it needs its own tag or it input display uh, transform and to do that you can right click um, you can select all this clip because they are just the same brick 709 clips and you can right click select ACES input transform invert display rec 709 just by doing that we have like a normalized image nice to work on with okay so that's that's the settings and um, if you're interested more about ACES color management. I think last year we invited Colin Kelly to the to the show. He did such an amazing explanations about ACES. So go ahead and check the recordings. It's still available in the in the Maxon uh, Training Team YouTube channel. I think he explained inside out all you need to know about ACES. So I think if you are curious about ACES color management, go watch that episodes with Colin Kelly I really highly recommend that okay so like before we want to create our looks with magic bullet looks and we can simply go to our timeline because we want to uh, generate like a unified look for all our clips in this case you can use magic bullet looks inside uh, uh, in, in, in the timeline and then after that it, you your clip will look exactly the same like all the other um, clips in your timeline right it's nothing new here right uh, it's like um, how do you call it it's like how you do it in Premiere Pro whenever you are using the magic bullet looks in the adjustment layer so um, what I want to use uh, what I want to show you here instead of show you, so showing you that the question is what if you want to use the film emulation slot that came from that that came with uh, resolve for example uh, sorry I got a question from Blake Anderson I believe you can't do aces in Final Cut Pro currently I am not sure Blake I I think you cannot but using magic bullet looks you can use aces slightly like what we did in Premiere Pro so you can use aces inside uh, magic bullets to um, to transform your image from the camera source into the display space and in between you can uh, you, you can also work inside aces just inside magic bullet looks but then as soon as you do um, adjustment per clip level not in magic bullet looks you'll be doing that not in aces I hope that's not complicating it much further um, let me know if that helps okay so um, we can use magic bullet looks in in the timeline uh, and it will it will be just exactly the same workflow like the one that we did in Premiere Pro previously but what if you want to use um, how do you call it the LUT that shipped uh, originally with the with the resolve so in this case this LUT here so for example resolve has like this film print LUT this Kodak uh, 2383 uh, D55 and of course this LUT is it's a hybrid LUT it's, it means that as well as it applies some creative um, adjustment in your image it also transform your image from the display uh, from the camera space into display space that's why you see it like it, it, it's looking wrong because you we are transforming our image twice um, what what this lot need to work uh, need to do is that it needs to to return our image back to aces okay we can do that um, using the color space transform so for example here let me just create a node before and after this uh, resolve lot here and in the note number one 
I'll drag and drop color space transform and in the node number three I also drag and drop uh, color space transform and here I want to go from ASUS AP1 into ASUS CCT and I think I need to show you this before let's let's forget about this a little bit I think I need to show you this um, if I open my LUT folder okay if I open my LUT folder go to film looks and open it with a text editor you'll see that here there's like a this a very tiny details about the LUT it says that the LUT needs a Cineon log um, gamma and it works in the REC 709 uh, color space and then also it will output REC 709 image gamma 2.4 right so that's how you can like uh, how do you call it play the detective work on your LUT check your LUT um, what does it requires and what is um, returning uh, to you okay so in this case we need to meet the LUT exactly where it requires so in this case I want to transform my image from ASUS CCT into REC 709 with a gamma of Cineon log, Cineon film log, and I think I can just forget about the tone mapping, no white point adaptations, and in the in the node number three, I want to return from REC 709 gamma 2.4 because this LUT is returning a gamma 2.4 REC 709 images, right? So here I want to select my input as REC 709 gamma 2.4 back into ASUS AP1 with ASUS CCT. And when I turn on my LUT, it should give me like this nice looking uh, filmic look all right so if I compound that together I have my final uh, film print emulations things done with a LUT that was shipped with resolve everybody has it if you have resolve you have this LUT you just need to know um, how to use it what are the requirements of this LUT and if we go to or I'll to our images you can see that all our images have like this ooh this not looking very good is it because of the tone mapping okay I'll use Da Vinci what about luminance mapping Okay, just return it to DaVinci, something like that. Okay. So, um, where was I? Where was I? I think I forgot things. While I'm trying to remember where was I, let me answer the question from Blake. Um, can you work with ACES in Colorista? You use it first and then Magic Bullet looks second, right? Um, yeah, the one that I showed you before, Blake. When you use that, when you use Colorista in the clip level, I think I already cl uh, closed Premiere Pro. So when you use Colorista in the clip level and then after that you uh, use um, looks in ACES, in the adjustment layer I think colorista is still work in the camera original uh, cam camera source um, color space and in this case the RE log C uh, color space so that's that's the that's the downside working that way but then if you're using colorista inside magic bullet set in ACES then you are in ACES right 
So, okay, I have my film print emulations here done at the timeline level. And if I want to emulate the film negative, I can use Magic Bullet looks, right? So I can go be it in the in the same like a timeline, uh, be it in the same um, locations in the timeline level, or I can go in the in the group preclip and apply Magic Bullet looks here and just apply the film emulation, the film negative in this area, in this, in this category. So here, if I launch Magic Bullet Looks, and now you need to um, set ACES inside Magic Bullet Looks. It needs, the input need to be set into ACES and the output need to be set back as ACES. So in this case, you can select output, ACES, ACES CCT, or there's like a, this very convenient tool, a very convenient button here called same as input. Select that and select the preview to be in Rec 709 and enable the preview, done, All right? So in this case, I want to emulate the look of film negative. And as before, I don't want the grain. I just want some little little contrast in my image. Just reduce the strength a little bit. And perhaps this is also a nice way to introduce my optical diffusions in the group preclip. And this is glimmer glass. And also I can also emulate the halations. So I'll put the halations before the film negative. So halations is a film artifact as you can see in this gentleman face, you can really see that, you know, anytime you have a like high contrasting area and if you shot that um, area with a film stocks, you normally get like this um, artifacts. And here you can select like the available presets, modern 35, modern 35, only the highlights, or you can go like really strong and you have like that kind of effects but for my taste I just want a little bit just modern highlight preview the highlights and reduce it even further so the halations will be only happening like for example in the very bright highlights like in the slight source there before after so it's very subtle and as soon as I hit click there you go i have it and now you can adjust the strength if you like to zero hundreds somewhere in between 50 and now you can move forward and grade your clip so for example here if we want to we can try start balancing our clips here just by reducing um, a little bit of the blue so we'll introduce yellow, not too much, and something like that. And perhaps I can also reduce the contrast just slightly. And if I select those, the other clips, and I like middle click, mouse middle click using the scroll button in this first one, everything will be applied in the other clips right of course it's not going to work with this clip because this is indoor perhaps and this one reduce red increase blue a little bit and copy that okay so um that's another way where you can use magic bullet looks so you can like split it into a different um different like a groups inside resolve so for example here what i did is that i try to emulate the film negative in the group preclip and then after that my uh balancing operations grading color grading and everything if i do windows and everything it will be applied after that and finally everything will be like um will be it's like um, printing everything into a film print. Of course, that's a, that's a, um, just a loose, uh, how do you call it? 
go there. Okay, um, so that's another way you can use magic bullet looks inside um, Resolve. And what you probably don't know is that you can save magic bullet looks as a power grid inside Resolve. So um, if you open your um, gallery and you can like grab stills here, and here, if you right click and you display note graph, you'll be you'll you'll see that in this note graph there's like a a teeny tiny ofx um uh tool applied there that's magic bullet looks so for example here if i reset this one and just drag and drop it here i got exactly the same magic bullet looks with the same strength and then you can create a power grade for example add power grade album and from your stills just drag it to this power grade and now every, anytime you start a new project you'll be able to access your uh, favorite tools inside magic bullet looks set in aces like really fast because it's already in the in the power grade so um i think like in the early uh, max on color episode like the very first max on color episode i talked about this like in detail uh, we talk about um, borrowing the aesthetics of film emulations uh, of film uh, in your color grading and i talked about exactly um, this method and there are plenty of like um, um, tools that i showcase in that uh, show as well so if you want to know like learn more about that you can go to uh, to the youtube uh, max on training uh, team and watch the very first episode of max on color and um yeah that was it and that's that those are the different ways you can use magic bullet looks in all different applications and like anything in post productions color in color grading experiment is a key so keep experimenting guys and um let me know how you use magic bullet inside your um projects and you can reach me in my email. Let me show the email, maxoncolor at maxon.net. And if you want to uh, learn more about any different topics in color grading related, let me know in that email as well. So if you want to um, watch a different topics, write me there and I'll get back to you. Okay, is there any questions left? Blake? I forgot you could use colorista in looks. Thanks, a new feature, I believe. Um, it's it's been forever, Blake. It's it's been it's been there since like oh, it's since long time. Um, any like any um, standalone tools inside Magic Bullet Suite is also available inside Magic Bullet Looks. Magic Bullet Looks is the the flagship tools that contain everything, so to say. Okay. Right. Um, let me close it with a housekeeping right thank you so much once again for joining me today it's been my pleasure so if you want to learn more about um different topics or or anything let me know write me in the email okay and if you want to uh watch what other webinars coming up next you can go to maxon.net slash events and you'll see that those are like the webinars coming next um next monday we'll have a universe for editors so if you've been figuring out how to use universe in final cut pro for example or in davinci resolve or in avid media composer those are the sessions for you um make sure uh to join us in um every every monday uh to talk about universe and in the first week we'll talk about premiere pro uh second week will be avid media composer the third week will be DaVinci Resolve. And um, the, the final week, the fourth week, it will be in Final Cut Pro. Okay? Right. And don't forget to get your t-shirts. Um, the password for today's t-shirt is still... Oh, I think you cannot read that. Let me delete this. Okay. The password is Sculpting World. Um, you, you can read that in your screen. And... And you can watch the recording of this sessions and other sessions in the Maxon Training Team YouTube channel. 
and it will be available with timestamps. So anytime you, you want to skip me blabbering about certain topics that you don't want to hear, you can just click the timestamps and you can go directly to the topics that you really like. And thank you, Dr. Sasi, for always providing us with a nice timestamps. It helps a lot. Thank you so much. And um, I guess I'll see you in the next two weeks then, right? Take care, have a nice day, and goodbye.